So we've been talking about organic compounds and there's four groups of organic compounds that make up living things. We have carbohydrates, we have lipids, we have proteins, and we have nucleic acids. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about proteins and how the shape of the protein is um, going to determine its function. We're going to be talking about the four levels of protein structure. And this is re really important because in biology, when you look at the shape of a molecule, oftentimes the shape of the molecule, the shape of the protein is going to determine what it does, determine its function. So we do say like form fits the function. The conformation, the form, the shape is going to determine what it does. So we say that there are four levels of protein structure. The first level of proteins is the primary level of proteins. And proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids. So I have here a pipe cleaner with beads on it. And we're just gonna pretend that each bead, okay, each bead on this pipe cleaner is a single amino acid. And there's 20 different amino acids, correct? Okay, uh, I only have, uh, three colors here, but there are, let's just pretend that there's 40, there's 20 different amino acids represented by these um, amino acids. And these amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds. And that's why we say that a chain of amino acids is called a polypeptide chain, because each amino acid, between each amino acids, you have peptide bonds. So you have polypeptide bonds that make up a chain. So you have a polypeptide chain, which is a chain of amino acids. This is the primary level of um, protein structure. And proteins do not stay at the primary level, meaning proteins, functional proteins that have a job to do, they don't stay as a chain. They're going to go to the next level of protein structure, which is the secondary level of protein structure, which is taking this chain and either it's gonna coil up, okay, or it's gonna fold on itself. All right, so I have here another example. This is the secondary, this is the secondary structure of protein. You have a coil. This is the coiling part right over here. So our chain of amino acids is now coiled or it's folded. Okay, do they see the zigzag pattern? Okay, so you have the polypeptide chain now in, in secondary, um, secondary structure or secondary level because it's alpha helix, which is the coiling, or it's the beta pleated sheet, which is the folding. So this is the secondary level of protein structure. And a lot of proteins don't stay in the secondary level. A lot of proteins will go to the next level of protein structure or tertiary level of protein structure, which is to fold even further on itself. Oh, before I move on to tertiary level though, I do wanna say, that the secondary level of protein structure is determined by the uh, hydrogen bonding that occurs between the amino acids. So the amino acids on this chain, this polypeptide chain, they'll form hydrogen bonds with each other. The hydrogen bonding will occur between the carboxyl group and the amine group of these amino acids. So the secondary level of protein structure, which is the coiling, and the folding is determined by the, it's held in the secondary shape, the coiling and the folding, by the hydrogen bonds that occur between the amino acids, okay? And so, like I said, most proteins don't stay in the secondary level, they'll actually fold even further, okay? They'll fold even further into a different shape, um, and that's gonna be due to many types of bonding, all right? So here I have, um, here, this is the next level of protein structure where I took that secondary level of protein structure and I folded it even further. And this is what you would get. This is an example of tertiary or the third level of protein structure. And that could be due to many different kinds of interaction like hydrogen bonds. Maybe there's an R group here. Uh, remember there's 20 different amino acids and they all have different R groups. Maybe there's R groups that have positive hydrogens that are attracted to something that's negative, a different R group with a negative charge. Um, so the tertiary structure of protein is determined by the interactions of the R groups of the different amino acids. You might have hydrogen bonding occurring between the R groups. You might have hydrophobic interactions um, occurring between the R groups. 
And what I mean by that is on the outside of this protein, you have aqueous solution. So in a cell, you have a lot of water that surrounds the, the enzyme or the protein. And because there's a lot of water, you're going to have hydrophobic R groups in, an, in the amino acids, they're not going to want to interact with the water. So they're going to be hidden inside the interior portion of the protein. So let's say maybe, you know, in here, you might have some R groups that are hydrophobic and they're going to be hidden, tucked away by the other amino acids. They're going to be hidden and tucked away, um, away from the aqueous solution that makes up the cell. So that's hydrophobic interactions. So we talk, talked about how the tertiary structure could be due to hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic interactions, also ionic bonding. Maybe you have some R groups that have a positive charge and negative charges, and then they would be attracted to each other. So it's going to cause the um, secondary structure to fold in because they're attracted to each other, ionic bonding. And then you might have disulfide bridges. So the fourth type of interaction that determines the tertiary shape of the protein would be disulfide bridges. Um, let me find a good example of that. So let's say that these two red beads are R groups that contain um, sulfur or sulfhydryl functional group. So if they contain sulfur, they can actually form a disulfide bridge. Di means two. Disulfide means two sulfides coming together. So you have these R groups that have sulfur that connect the two R groups together and they form a bridge causing our chain to fold like this and you form a disulfide bridge. And a disulfide bridge is a type of covalent bond so it's kind of a stronger bond that would cause the um, protein to um, fold even further. Okay so um, that's tertiary structure of protein, where you have the secondary level of protein folding even further due to four different kinds of bonds. Hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, hydrophobic interactions, and disulfide bridges. Okay, so that's tertiary. And then the next level of protein structure is called quaternary. And not all proteins, not all proteins are in quaternary structure. Some functional proteins are in tertiary structure. So they have a specific job and function to do. But hemoglobin is an example where you have four tertiary structures coming together to uh, become functional, right? I just have two here, okay? But um, this is an example of quaternary structure where you have two or more tertiaries coming together and that could be due to ionic bonding, hydrogen bonding, where they're attracted to each other and they form a bond and then they become a functional protein that has a job to do. Like hemoglobin would have four of these coming together to uh, bond to oxygen, and then they would transport oxygen to your cells, okay? So those are the four levels of protein structure. We have primary, right, which is just the chain of amino acids. This is what we call a polypeptide chain. And then you have the secondary level of protein structure. It could be the alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet, the folding. And then the protein will fold further on itself to form the tertiary level of protein structure. And that's due to hydrogen bonding, ionic bonding, hydrophobic interactions, and disulfide bridges. And then you have the quaternary level of protein structure where you have two or more coming together. And again, that would be due to hydrogen bonding, ionic bonding, disulfide bridges again. Okay, so um, those are the four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. And again, all of that is going to determine the the final shape of the protein, which is going to determine or tell us what the protein does, its function. Okay? Alrighty. Thank you.